Hey you guys, what's up? My name is Jason, and today I'm going to be taking you through this cool little tutorial on how to animate this character. Now, if you haven't seen the video where I teach you how to create this character in Photoshop, you can go ahead and click on the link in the description, or click on the link at the end of this video, and that will take you straight to that video. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. Now, I don't have any of this planned out, so we're going to try to wing this as much as possible and try to figure out how to do this. So, the first thing I've done is I've broken up my character into separate parts, and you need to do the same thing. So, I have it broken up, so this front leg is one layer, the head and the ears are one layer, and the body and these two legs are also one layer. Then I put my background layers into a folder, and I'm going to do the same thing for my body. So, I'm going to select all of my layers that make up my body, and then I'll put those into a folder. Then I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of that folder by hitting Control J on my keyboard or Command J if you're on a Mac. So now we have a copy of that. So this first folder is going to be our first layer or our first frame for our animation. So next what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create our second frame. But before we do that, we want to turn on our timeline. So we're going to come up to Window, then we're going to come down to Timeline. And then we're going to come down here to where it says create frame animation. If yours does not say frame animation, go ahead and hit this drop down arrow and make sure you select frame animation and then go ahead and click that. And now we have our frame animation timeline down here. For now, we're going to leave that there and we're going to go ahead and start creating each frame of our animation. So this is going to be sort of a simple hover cycle, but we're going to give a little bit of some head tilting to our character, maybe a little bit of a blink in there. And we'll also move the ears a little bit. The first frame is going to be the one we've already created. Then the second frame will be our next folder. So we can go ahead and close this folder and come to our next folder. And now we want to start animating. So first off, we're going to go ahead and start with the body because that's the main part of the movement of our animation. And so once we know where our body is going to be in this frame, then we know where to move everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and select the body layer. Then I'm going to come up to my puppet warp tool by coming up to edit and then coming down to puppet warp. And now we can go ahead and warp and animate this body. So what I need to do first is I need to add some pins in there. So if I go ahead and click down here at the foot, and then I click up here at the top of the leg, well, now I have two pins and I can go ahead and grab and move that as you can see there. But since we don't have anything else pinned, it's just pivoting right there at that point. So I need to undo that. And let's add a few more pins in so our body doesn't move. So I'm gonna add one in on this leg, one in the middle for the joint, and one down here at the bottom. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a few pins to the body. So I'll add one there, one right there, maybe one down here at the bottom. So that way my body doesn't move very much. So now you'll see if I click at this point, now the body doesn't really move. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and animate my two legs to sort of squat down. So I'm going to grab this one right here and I'm going to bring it up just a tiny bit. So you can almost barely see it, but there's a little black edge right on the edge of there. And that's showing the difference between this frame and our last frame. Then let's go ahead and animate this one. So I'm going to bring this up to about there. And then I'll bring this leg up a little bit higher. So it's just barely been animated upwards. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And then I'm going to go ahead and nudge this down using the arrow keys on my keyboard until it lines up with my original frame. All right, perfect. So now our character has just slightly been animated and you'll see the difference. If I go ahead and turn off this folder and switch between the two, you'll see the body has gone up and then down, but it's only the one part where we have the body and these two legs. So now we need to animate everything else. So this is going to come down next. We need to go ahead and animate this leg right here. So we need to come to that layer, turn on the puppet warp tool. So We'll go edit, come down to puppet warp. And we'll do the same thing. We'll add a pin up here, add a pin down here, and add a pin down here. And then we're gonna go do the same thing like we did on this leg. We're gonna pull this one up just a tiny bit and a little bit outwards. And then we'll pull this one up a tiny bit too. Then we'll hit enter. And then we're gonna go ahead and nudge that down so it lines up with our original foot. So now we can go ahead and toggle between these two frames again. And you can see how he's moving downwards. Now it's not a perfect animation yet because we still have this background frame turned on, but once we get it set up in our timeline, it's only going to show each um, folder one at a time. So next, let's go ahead and animate the head. So as the body comes down, what I want to do is I want to rotate this head. So I'm going to come to that layer, then I'm going to turn on my transform tool. So we'll go control T 
Now that I have my transform tool turned on, I can go ahead and rotate this by clicking out here and rotating. Except you'll see that it's rotating at the wrong pivot point. We want the pivot point to be at the neck of our character. And this little spot here in the middle of our selection is the pivot point. So if we go ahead and click and drag that, we can drag that to wherever we like. So I want to drag it to about there. That's my pivot point for my neck. And then I'm going to go ahead and rotate that to about there. Then I'll go ahead and hit enter. Next, what I want to do is I'm actually going to nudge that down just a tiny bit and over. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn on my puppet warp for this layer. So I'll go edit, come down to puppet warp. And I want to animate these ears. So I'm going to add a pin right there, a pin in the middle, and a pin at the bottom. we do the same thing for this one. So three pins. And then we need to pin the head down. So I'll add one right there in the middle of the top of the head, one down here in this cheek, and one down here in this cheek. We can even add one down here at the bottom just for good measure. And now we can go ahead and animate these ears. So I'm just going to go ahead and animate the ears inwards a little bit. So I'll move this one over like so. And I'll move this ear over like so. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. So now that head and those ears are animated. So if I toggle between those two, you see there's a slight change in my character's pose. Great. Now let's go ahead and animate our next frame. So for our next frame, we don't want to work off of this frame right here, our original frame. We actually want to work off of the frame we just created. So what we'll do is we'll turn off this frame, turn on our other folder frame, and each one of these folders represents one frame, just in case you're wondering. So then we want to go ahead and make a copy of this. So I'm gonna click on my folder layer and then hit Control J or Command J if you're on a Mac, and that'll make an automatic copy of all of those layers within that folder. And I can go ahead and close this folder down that we just created. And now let's go ahead and animate this next one. So this is basically gonna be like what we just barely animated. We're just gonna continue that animation. So starting with the body back here, we're gonna go ahead and select that layer Turn on the Puppet Warp tool, add those pins in, so two on that leg, three on this leg, and then one down here, and one back here, and one right here. Then let's go ahead and animate those. So this one needs to come up just a tiny bit. This one needs to come out and up just a tiny bit, and this one needs to come up. And let's go ahead and hit Enter. And then using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I'm gonna go ahead and nudge that down until it lines up with the bottom of the feet again. Because we want this to appear like it's on the same level the whole time, we just want the body to move down as it's crouching down. Then let's move on to our front leg. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Puppet Warp tool. I'll add a pin right there, a pin right there, and a pin right there. And then I can go ahead and pull this pin out just a tiny bit and up. And then I'll pull this pin up a tiny bit like so. Then I'll go ahead and hit enter. I'm going to go ahead and nudge that down with my arrow keys. Then let's go ahead and move on to this head. So I'm going to go ahead and come to that layer and we're going to do the same thing again. So use the transform tool, drag the pivot point to where we want our neck to pivot at. Go ahead and pivot that a tiny bit. So I'm going to pivot it to about there. Hit enter. And then I'm going to go ahead and animate these ears. So I'll turn on my Puppet Warp tool, so edit. And then I'm going to come into Puppet Warp. Add those pins in, so three in each ear. And then three on the head, so one at the top, and one in each cheek. And we can add one at the bottom too, just to help it from not moving. Then I'm going to go ahead and animate my ears, like so. Hit enter, great. So now that's gonna animate from there to there. Perfect. Now I'm noticing that we're getting these little weird white things on the edge of our layers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in there and see if I can take care of those. I'm not sure why those are showing up, but we definitely need to fix them. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my erase tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and just erase that away. All right, I think that looks much better. Now let's go ahead and animate our fourth frame. So we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna make a copy of this layer, so Control J. And then we're gonna go ahead and close down that back layer that we just barely had, because we only wanna work with this frame now. 
Then we're gonna go ahead and animate this frame just the same way we did with our other ones. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the body. We'll go puppet warp, so edit, puppet warp, and we'll do the same thing all over again. So we're gonna animate this leg up, animate this leg up also. And we'll go ahead and hit enter. And then we're gonna go ahead and nudge this layer down so it lines up with the bottom. And once again, it's adding that weird white edge to our character. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can erase that out. So I'll go ahead and zoom in there. Just using my erase tool, just erase away the edges of that. All right, now let's go ahead and animate this front leg. So we'll use the Puppet Warp tool. Then we'll go ahead and hit Enter. And we're gonna go ahead and nudge that down, like so. And then let's go ahead and animate the head. So I'll come to the head layer, turn on my transform tool, drag the pivot point down to the neck, and then go ahead and rotate that to about there. Hit enter. And then we'll go ahead and animate those ears. So we'll go edit, puppet warp, and we'll do it all over again. Now, this time we want the ears to animate a little bit less than they have in previous frames. So we're just gonna go ahead and barely nudge them over like so. It's just a tiny, tiny movement. Like so. Go ahead and hit enter. Then I'm gonna go ahead and nudge my head down a little bit because I feel like it's getting a little bit too high. In fact, now that I think about it, the head needs to be nudged down a little bit in all of our frames because as the body moves down, the head needs to move down with it. So let's go ahead and open our previous frame, come to the head layer, and also nudge that down a tiny bit a little bit higher than this frame that we're working on right now. And we'll do the same thing for our other frame. So I'll grab the head. I'm gonna go ahead and push it down just a tiny bit. All right, perfect. Now I'll go ahead and close those, turn it off, close that, turn it off. So now I'm just working with this last frame. All right, so now we have our last frame. Now on my background, I have my sketch still there a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and come into my background folder, find that layer, I'm gonna go ahead and use my erase tool to go ahead and erase away parts of that sketch. Perfect. Next what I want to do is I want to go ahead and make copies of all my layers and reverse this animation. So as he comes down, then he's going to come back up. So let's go ahead and do that. So first what I need to do is I need to close down my background folder and I'm going to close down this folder. And then I can go ahead and select all of my frame folders and hit control J or command J. And so now I have a copy of all those. Next, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and reverse these. So I need to start with this bottom layer and I need to drag it up to the top. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab the next layer and drag it in between those two. And I'll grab the next one and drag it in between those two. And so now they're in the correct order. So now it's gonna go backwards. So it'll go forwards and then it'll go backwards. And then we can play that in a loop in our animation. Now before we set up our animation down here in the timeline, I wanna add in one more animation to this, which is going to be an eye blink. So the eye blink is just gonna be two frames and we need to decide where we wanna put that. So I think I'm gonna do it as my character is coming back up. So once he gets to this point right here, I'm gonna go ahead and have him blink. So I'm gonna turn off these two frames. And on this frame, I'm gonna go ahead and select this dark gray color on my character. Then I'm gonna go ahead and open that folder, come to the head layer, and then I'm gonna go ahead and paint over my eyes. So this will give the illusion that my character is blinking. We wanna do this with both eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and select this lighter gray color and paint a little bit of that in. Next, let's go ahead and move back down to this frame down here, which is the same exact frame. So if we go ahead and turn off this folder right here, we have the same exact frame so this frame is gonna play twice in our animation, right next to each other. So in the next one, what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and use our brush tool once again, come to our head layer, and we're gonna paint in some eyelids. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a hard-edged brush, 
or this one might work better. Bring down the size and I just wanna paint straight across here like so. So just a basic straight line. Make sure you're on your darker gray color. So we add in that line like so and we do the same thing for the top. Then I'm gonna go ahead and select this lighter gray color, put my brush opacity at 20% by hitting the number two on my keyboard, and I'm gonna slowly blend that lighter color into my darker color. All right, great. So this frame is just gonna help that blink animate a little bit more smoothly. So it's not just gonna be a one frame blink, it'll be a two frame blink, and it'll just look a little bit smoother. Now let's go ahead and set up our animation and see how this plays out. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and count how many frames we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames. So we need to add in eight frames over here in our timeline by hitting this little icon that looks like a new frame or new layer icon. So we're gonna click that seven times till we get up to the number eight. Next, we're gonna go ahead and come to our frame one. And what we do is whatever layer is on in this frame, that's what's gonna show in this frame. And so right now we have our frame one group folder turned on, which is what we want. Then in our next frame, so we'll go ahead and click the number two frame in our timeline. Then we wanna go ahead and turn on that frame two folder and turn off the frame one folder. Then we'll go ahead and move on to the frame three in our timeline and we'll do the same thing. So we'll turn off frame one and turn on frame three. We're gonna go ahead and continue to do this all the way across. So we'll come up to frame four, come to frame five, Turn off frame one layer. We'll just continue to do this. All right, so now we can go ahead and click through our frames to see how this plays. Great. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and select all of our frames by clicking on one, holding down shift, and then clicking down to the other. And then we're going to come down to where it says once, and we're going to make that play forever. So it loops over and over again. And then we're going to come to where it says zero seconds, hit that drop down arrow. And we want it to play for 0.1 seconds. That's how long each frame is going to play for. So now it'll play a little bit slower. Now let's go ahead and hit the play button and see how that this looks. Now, I think it's playing a little bit too slow, so what we can do is we can go ahead and select all of these, come to where it says 0.1 seconds, and we're gonna change that to other. And we're gonna go ahead and type in 0.05. And we'll hit okay. Now let's go ahead and see how that plays. All right, I think that plays a little bit more smoothly. If you wanted to, you could play it even more smoothly than that. And if you wanted to, you could even add more frames in between each frame to make it play smoother. All right, so now we have a really nice hover state animation. I really hope you learned something from this tutorial and you got some real value for it. My name's Jason and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll be sending you many more videos just like this one.